for your viewing pleasure. We have an expensive M3 Max Pro Ultra A2992. Um, this person spilled homemade juice on it. I believe it was homemade watermelon juice. I can see red residue and it does smell vaguely of watermelons, which is not good to do on your really expensive MacBook. Data is important on this. This actually turns on, but what it does is it shuts off after I think something like 30 seconds to a minute. So this person's also just been using this for like a week. Um, their, uh, their, their, their wife had brought it in now, now to get it fixed. So, um, and really on this, I don't even want to run power through this. There's obvious junk here. Um, this fan, for example, the bearing sticking, I did order some replacement fans for it too. I, I kind of think this one's going to just be replacing a bunch of stuff that's clearly bad on our uh, on our left side of our, our chicken wing here. Um, and I think on this one too, I'm probably going to take it out, just look over the board on the onset and then just run it through the ultrasonic cleaner on this because there's all this like juice residue on here and it's just, you know, gross to uh, to work with and uh, stuff like the heat sink and stuff we're going to clean out inside of this case. See some on the antenna up here. So a lot of cleaning on this. And then uh, I kind of reckon our primary fault's just going to be in like our audio driver area. There's maybe some supplemental rail around there that's you know, open or short or some chips damage. And that's maybe what's causing it to turn off um, after a little bit of time running rather than just not turning on at all. So we're going to take this apart and I'll probably flip the camera around and try to show the uh, process for ultrasonic cleaning because I don't think I've, I've shown that before. So we'll be we'll be back. Okay, so we actually don't see um, too much of a mess on the uh, back side of the board here. So I think this is just going to be our top side stuff. I might swap this guy. Well, I guess this is one of the new uh, CD32s. These are probably OTP configured. I think I may just remove this and reball it uh, here. VV3S2. Uh, I think I ultrasonic this first and then uh, we'll maybe lift this and get this cap replaced. I think we could find something uh, similar on another board. Oh, let's, uh, well, we're going to wait for the ultrasonic cleaner to heat up, then we'll, uh, we'll get this in there. Okay, it's logistically hard to rig up cameras in a way where I can actually record this ultrasonic cleaner because it's on the other side of the office. Um, in any case, I'm just going to go over the settings that I use briefly. You know, and I'm realizing the picture that I took of it is actually at the wrong uh, setting, but oh well. Um, you would set the timer on this to four minutes, the temperature to 68 degrees Celsius, power to nine. Um, for the actual solution, three to five percent Branson electronics cleaner, and then the rest distilled water. Um, if you ever put in a new solution, you should run the degas function to get any bubbles out of the solution. Otherwise, it can cause like cavitation on the board, which is no bueno. So just, you know, run degas for five, 10 minutes on a new solution, heat it up, put your board in, uh, generally four minutes, uh, and you want to flip it essentially so that the actual waves from the cleaner can get into the chips from different directions and clean them thoroughly. Um, I also use this ultrasonic cleaner in this case to clean off this person's, uh, Wi-Fi antenna because that had some, some junk on it. Um, and then otherwise for like the inside of like the keyboard and stuff, just, you know, a, paper towel and some alcohol basically got a little bit of alcohol on the keyboard just to kind of neutralize the uh, juice that was in there um that's pretty much it for the ultrasonic process i, I think i'll link uh there's a video from uh tcrs circuit it's a pretty old video but a, a little bit more detail for you know what ultrasonic cleaners are, are good and bad uh long and short of it crest makes good cleaners um i'll find the model of the one i'm using but this one fits basically any laptop motherboard so i got one that's pretty big uh it's between a thousand to two thousand dollars or so um i think i got this actually off of a dental supply website so that is a good place to find them other than that you can probably find you know used ones on ebay or or something like that and i would typically trust uh you know a tool like this to last a really long time so i wouldn't be too worried uh about getting one off of uh ebay um next section here i did end up recording just cleaning off the board after it's out of the ultrasonic cleaner so i will record a separate voiceover for that Okay, really not much to explain here. Get a big uh, yeah, plastic bucket or something to pour some alcohol over your board. 
Uh, you can also just, you know, fill a bucket with distilled water and kind of swish it around. It's also to get off the um, EC fluid. I think what I grabbed here is like 70% ISO, 30% distilled water. Um, and that is generally what I use. Uh, you just kind of swish it around. I think the, the footage here is fast forwarded a little bit. I'm actually being quite gentle when I'm swishing this around. It looks like I'm doing it uh, very fast, but the, um, the footage is sped up slightly. So this fits. Um, after you get it out of here, you're gonna wanna you know, dry it off and that'll kind of be the uh, next section there, which also has a brief voiceover. Um, and, and really not much to it um, after you, you know, displace all of the, um, you know, cleaning solution with some isopropyl alcohol. I just put it on a hot plate at 70 Celsius for about 30 or 45 minutes, just kind of flipping halfway through. That'll evaporate any liquid off the board. Um, you can always do a little check just with like an air compressor on some stuff after if liquid's still coming out, I would let it sit a little bit longer. Pretty uh, you know, common sense and self-explanatory. You want to dry it off again because you don't want any distilled water um you know left over on anything when you're running power through the device you want to make sure it's absolutely dry and then you know after that you can then run power and you know test your stuff um i, I suppose most of the time when you ultrasonic something you probably already did rework on the board and made sure it's working um in this case we just had this you know residue we wanted to clean it first before we're actually running power through it and seeing what's going on because i didn't want to cause you know damage that wasn't uh, already there okay so i ended up putting this back together because i didn't actually see too much that was too concerning i thought maybe it would just work after cleaning um this actually just doesn't turn on at all for me is what i'm seeing so let's uh oh here i need to reposition my multimeter window thing here there we go does that show up correctly now okay so this is with the battery unplugged we're stuck at five volts and it's going to like eight watts and i could see i was again super hot. i'm gonna take out the board again do this but we can look at the uh this here we got that right next to our cd32 getting real real hot so i'm going to replace that cap i'm just going to take out the board though to uh to do this um so we'll be we'll be back uh later actually i gotta go fix a fix an iphone here i want to see what i'm showing uh that will block that out there's a ticket showing up in the upper right um yeah, we're gonna take out this board, get that cap replaced. I think that's probably our our main flaw there. So um, the customer did say this would stay on for a bit and you know work for them, um, perhaps at some point. But yeah, that capacitor is shorted. I think we can see which one it is right there. It looks like it got very very hot. We'll replace that guy. Get a new one on there. Okay, we'll be back. Okay, so I think we can see um, what capacitor here is misbehaving oh, rather our bottom one right here let's get that off i assume that pad under there is not happy so it's basically causing a 3v3 s2 short um which is why this drew a, quite a bit of power eight watts or so um hot air we're 30 I'm just gonna remove this we'll see how the pads look underneath we might not replace this but i'll see Very clearly bad. We can see it exploded. Uh, if that doesn't look too bad, I'll, I'll try to find a replacement one off of a donor. Okay, got that off. Pads look fine. Um, I suppose let's just see if this uh, powers on now. Actually, let me grab a. Um, Kind of drop all my screws. Uh, but we took out the antenna on this, replaced the fan, cleaned off all the residue that was on here, and then I ended up just dunking this antenna actually in the ultrasonic cleaner as well. Uh, board itself has also gone through the ultrasonic, which well, I guess is kind of more apparent in the microscope cam. But we always had you know kind of a big mess around here. There's a little bit of residue from like the uh, you know, alcohol. We don't really care about that though. We got all the gunk off of it, so. Uh, I'll just put a little bit of alcohol in the uh, you know, keyboard to hopefully kind of neutralize the uh, the juice that was spilled on it. Um, oh, what was I doing? Let's just grab a USB-C connector out of here and see if this turns on now. Here, let's see what this does now. All right. Hey, this seems to be turning on. 
wonderful. I'm actually kind of glad this ended up just having like a strict uh, kind of no power problem because figuring out you know, why this shuts off after a few minutes is a lot, a lot harder to do. Um, I'm gonna clean this off a little bit further. Well, actually, I guess let's uh, let's find a replacement cap for this. So it's a 10 microfarad, 6.3 volt, 0402. I think we can just pull a similar one near. Um, we can just find another five. Uh, what what what? Uh, 3V3S2 capacitor near one of the CD32s off of like uh, I think I have like an A2779 or A2442 board. I can pull these off of. We'll go grab that, get that off, and get that on. Okay, here. so I ended up just grabbing a um, M1 14 inch donor, which has the same. 3s2 caps around its cd3217 or just because this was at the top of my pile of donors so we're just gonna grab this uh rightmost cap right here pull it off put it on the other one that's pretty much it nothing too crazy here get our hotter on fume extractor on um you can use the parts search function in um, flex board view as well to find parts it does take a while especially if you have a lot of schematics like i have in this folder it just searches all of them it's not super efficient but you know it works it comes down to it, you're waiting you know a few minutes whatever um in this case though these are like these 3v3 s2 caps are just on all of these around the um usb controller so i just kind of knew one in this area would be it so open the schematic confirmed that's it Okay, get this over here. I'm actually gonna turn this around. Got our cap. Get some flux. Right here. Off. And we're just going to sneak up on it with the hot air. Does this capacitor need to be replaced? Eh, probably not. It might be important. I'm just going to replace it. Simple enough. There we go. Looks good. Clean off the board, put it back together. We already saw that it was turning on, so that capacitor remove was a wire. As we know, capacitors are not supposed to be wires. Far from it. Except for ones that bridge lines sometimes. Fancy terms. Uh. Okay, well, I'm just going to clean this off a little bit, let it cool down, and then um, put it back together, and then we'll uh, test it out. I think we'll be all right. Yippee hooray. The MacBook lives. Um, again, like on, on the onset for this, I, I was told it stays on for a bit and then shuts off. I didn't run power through it until I kind of uh, fixed it. Ooh, I see the uh, circle of fists here. We have a musician's device. Very nice. Um... Uh, in any case on this, uh, in, in a more exact sense, what was really going on here, um, I imagine this was probably worse for wear and maybe caused some issue after the device was on for a while, just from like, you know, power stress or something like that, or it could have been an issue with the actual USB-C controller. Oh, I'm sorry, we're looking at the, uh, let's go back to our M3 schematic. Um, essentially, issue was right here, this capacitor pretty much. Um, on top of that, stuff like the fan, uh, a few other parts, top side of the keyboard, and the board had, you know, kind of like a sticky, you know, juice on them. Uh, we ultrasonically cleaned the board, the antenna on the um, device, and, and, then, and then we replaced this capacitor uh, that was short-circuiting. Uh, so for me, this was kind of a strict no power scenario uh, for how it was running. It was doing five volts, getting like eight watts, and we could see this capacitor getting to about 100 degrees Celsius. That's our short circuit. Caps bad, replace it, pulled one off of an A2442 board of the exact same spec. And we have a, a MacBook that works. Um, it's late. I'm supposed to go home and have dinner. So I'm, I'm going to finish stress testing on this uh, it's, it's, you know, Saturday evening right now after close. 
I'll probably finish testing on this uh, on Sunday. I, I imagine it would be uh, fine because really nothing else I saw on this was notable. So I think we're okay. And uh, this person can uh, get back to uh, to making some some music, hopefully. Um, we'll catch you in the next one. Hopefully this helps someone. Uh, but yeah, I would reckon, you know, 5 volts, 8 watts, you might have uh, a shorted capacitor right here on your 3V3 S2. Or for example, you know, we probably have similar guys near our other um, USB controllers uh, rather on the back side of the board. Or we're probably going to have something around here, maybe one of these guys. There's going to be other, uh, you know, 3 3 s 2 capacitors around these other um, CD32s Like we can maybe check. Or oh, this is still all near us. In any case, probably same uh, sort of behavior you'd see on like 1v8 or 3v3 um, S2, basically, if you had a short circuit with a single cap bat on the board, even with no liquid damage. Um, in this case, obviously, the liquid is kind of our, what, what did this in. It eats away at the you know, casing around the uh, capacitor, and then we have the filaments break, and then it becomes a wire instead of um, doing its capacitor duties. Ramble, ramble, ramble. We'll see you in the next video. I hope everyone has a, has a nice, uh, happy Halloween. We'll catch you next time.